It's, uh, it's mating time. <laughs> no, it's time to mate this with this. Got the chassis up on the bench, pulled the engine out, um, and I'm gonna start taking some measurements, and then I'm gonna cut the chassis in half, here, here, and shrink it so that it fits that thing. And then that thing is gonna get all of its insides cut out, uh, which sounds very violent. First step, we'll just unbolt the shocks so that I can set this thing down flat and then, you know, take some measurements, make sure it all stays nice and square when I weld it back together. And, uh, yeah, start shortening things. It's always sketchy cutting into a frame that's like complete. There's always some tension and it usually pinches your grinder disc and makes it explode. Well, it was kind of a hassle, but I got three inches taken out of the frame here. These A-arm mounts were like a uh, stamped one-piece metal. Um, by the time I ground out enough to clear the different angle of pipe, it's now two pieces. So I just left the back half out while I tack the front together and then I'll touch these up and put them back on. Still, way less work than starting from scratch because all I have to do is make sure these two pieces of frame are square to each other rather than, you know, having to lay out the whole thing and make all the measurements. So, still saves a ton of time. So yeah, it's uh, three inches shorter now. And of course, I'll have to shorten this drive shaft, uh, but that'll be pretty easy. Put a few more tacks here, just put these brackets on, and then I'll uh, cut the back half off and move it forward as well. Kind of a weird process, cut it, cut it in half, weld it back together, cut it in half again, weld it back together again. But saves a lot of time because then all the engine mounts are already, you know, aligned. I don't have to, like I said, I don't have to measure everything a thousand times. We just got like one of the most exciting packages in the mail that we've ever gotten. And that is this, the Arc Droid, which is an incredibly tiny, incredibly easy to use CNC plasma cutter robot. The Arc Droid is sponsoring this video because they're awesome. It has a ton of really cool features. Um, so this is the torch head and holder, obviously, and you can just take that off. And then this is the part that I think is one of the coolest features and it's the only CNC plasma cutter that has this feature. Uh, it's the trace feature. So you, you plug this thing in, it's just a little stylus. You plug it into here and this, this is your whole interface. So um, you don't even need a computer to cut with this. Uh, if you do CAD on your computer, you can import the files and use this to cut, but you don't even need to do that because of the trace feature. Let's say you wanted to cut this shape. You go in here, you go trace, and then you just use this like a like a pen. And you can see it moves the little dot on the screen. So you just hold the button down. Trace that. Maybe you make a template out of cardboard like we do often. You could trace that too. You can make a template to fit into a weird spot out of cardboard. Rather than measuring everything, you just cut it up. You can lay your cardboard here on the table, trace it. Cut it out. They sent us a um, 
code to cut out a little GHPC logo. So I'll grab a piece of steel and we'll uh, cut that out. There we go. Nice. We get to be beta testers for this machine uh, because it's gonna be coming out in production around Christmas time. Um, until then, there's gonna be an Indiegogo campaign very soon with early bird, super early bird pricing. Um, you'll get $500 off. The cool thing is it's also fairly affordable, even full retail. It's $2,499 for this whole thing and it weighs about 30 pounds, which is really cool. And it's that big, so it's highly portable. It's gonna take all of our projects to the next level of awesomeness. Yeah, the cutting area that it can do is about 15 by 26. There's a link in the description to, you know, go check it out. I've hacked the back of this off and cut three and a half inches out of it. And I made myself some sleeves so that First of all, it all lines up when I go to put it back together, and second of all, it's stronger. So the top ones are a little on the loose side because that's just the pipe I have. The bottom ones fit perfectly because I made them on the lathe out of a slightly larger piece of pipe. So time to see if we can finagle it back together because the uh, everything changes when you cut it apart. So aligning all four of these might be a process. Ditching the stock steering setup for two reasons. One, it doesn't really work with everything. And two, I can make a better system that doesn't have crazy bump steer. Because this steering, because the pivot point for the steering tie rods was at the center, and this pivot point for the suspension is way out here, it makes for some really gnarly bump steer. So when you go from, you know, at resting, the tires are pretty straight and either at max up travel or max down travel, they tow in really hard. So I've got just about every bit and piece of steering components I have laid out here on the table because I'm working on steering. To have the column at the same angle that it used to be here, but now it'll be over here, which will give us anti-bump steer steering and it'll be in a better spot to come back over the engine to where the steering wheel will be. So uh, right now I'm working on using this nice greasable pivot from a snowmobile a-arm uh, i'm gonna cut that off and use it as the pivot for this section of steering so i can just weld it straight to the frame It's been most of a day, but we have like, uh, I don't know, half of a steering system going on over here. That's, uh, that's the idea. I'm messing around now with just like positioning to get the least amount of bump steer. When you're going with this much travel, it's kind of difficult to get zero bump steer, but we can minimize it. I shortened this pivot thing a little bit. This, the little splines I cut with the grinder worked out perfect. So that, that part of it at least is done, but there'll be a bolt that goes through and a nut up here inside of this. So that bolt will pull it nice and snug and give it a little extra strength. It goes over to the other side and it'll push on. There'll be an arm just like this right here. That's just an idler that, you know, so that that side tracks exactly the same steering path as this side. Yeah. 
system is nearing completion here and uh, this tie rod is temporary um, it's just random pieces I had I'll order some new heim joints and get that going right but that's the idea and it has all of the steering angle this is the most angle we've had on a power wheels period huh oh by far yeah I mean look at that that's that is mad angle I don't know what it is but a lot <laughs> it's a lot I could measure it here in a second, but yeah. And as far as I can tell, I haven't actually measured anything, but I, as far as I can tell, it actually has proper Ackerman now because the hubs are the way they're supposed to be as opposed to the kernel when they're backwards. So like the inside tire actually does steer tighter than the outside at any given point, especially when you steer really sharply. So that's what we want. And we also have incredibly minimal bump steer, which you can tell by looking at this, as, it, as the suspension travels, the steering angle remains essentially perfectly the same all the way throughout the travel. Which the original steering system on here from the ATV was horrible for that, uh, because they just counted on you not really having much <laughs> suspension travel. So now that we have all of the travel that the geometry will allow, we need that zero bump steer steering, which I've managed to uh, make happen here. It's all pretty sturdy and clean and simple. Okay. So this part here off of this U-joint is gonna go to the rest of the steering column and the steering wheel back there somewhere. And then, so that turns this shaft and this steering arm here, which directly turns this side of the vehicle, this wheel, and then it has this tie rod across the middle to this idler arm that sends the steering out to that side. And these arms and pivots are in exactly the same place on both sides, so it steers equally on both sides. The original system had the steering pivots here in the center, and you can see that's pretty far away from the suspension pivots, which leads to massive bump steer, which is undesirable, especially when you have a lot of suspension travel. And speaking of suspension travel, let me grab a tape measure. So nine inches, but that's with stock length A-arms. We're gonna lengthen these three or maybe more inches um, to help clear the body and that'll give us even more. I don't, how much more? I don't know, a lot. Probably well in excess of 12 inches of travel on all four corners. You. <laughs> I'm assuming. That is a lot for a Power Wheels camper. Well, you know, when you're rock crawling with independent suspension, you gotta have a hell of a lot of travel to get your flex, uh, which is a win-win because then it means your ride is much more comfortable and you have a ton of ground clearance, so. That's why I personally think that independent suspension is just better in every case. As long as you can build it strong enough, it's just better. Fight me. Always a good day when you're bending tubing, especially for a Barbie dream camper. Uh, yeah, so first piece of tubing for the project, bent and installed, um, and doggo approved. This piece was necessary to tie the two ends of the frame together. Um, it's still, as you can see, pretty flexible. So the next piece is gonna be a tube that goes in here and ties that together. And then I have to move to the other side, which is going to be more complicated because one side of this has to be removable for the engine to come out. To make my removable section of frame here, I need 
three unboltable locations because I need here, here, and then I also have to unbolt it down here where this bar ties in because that has to be there and it has to attach. So it has to be removable. And uh, what I've made here is one half of a, uh, you know, one inch tubing, you know, bolt together uh, coupling. We'll call it a coupling. It sounds like a great, good name for it. Uh, so obviously this would be more accurate and better if I had a mill. We don't. So I made it by hand with the grinder. Uh, of course the end here I turned down in the lathe so it fits nice and snug into the tube. And then this one is halfway done. It's got the tube section done. Now I just have to cut it so that it fits like this. frame chunk here that I'm working on and I tacked on just this front part here um, to test and see if I can get away with it this way because if I bring this junction back to here then I can have the reinforcement piece here and that doesn't have to be removable which is stronger lighter and simpler so this is a test to see if the engine comes out it should be able to sneak out kind of diagonally Yep, there we go. That's the that's the goal, and it works. Most importantly, the removable section is removable. That is so cool. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. It's all strong enough, so we're gonna manhandle this thing off the bench, throw some wheels and tires back on it, throw the shocks back on, and then we can start chopping up the body to fit on it and then, you know, move forward with building the roll cage and new shock mounts because these shock mounts are not quite right for what we're going to be doing, um, but they work for testing purposes. So. The, uh, chassis on the ground on its own weight again uh, which means it's time to start packing this brand new power wheels into pieces conveniently uh, some kids actually enjoyed it for a while a friend was over with kids and they used the crap out of it so that's good at least at least some kids had some fun before uh, before we completely disassemble it That is the craziest thing I've ever seen. It's, I had like, I knew it was gonna be crazy, but I didn't know it was gonna be this crazy this soon or just at all. Like, look at the, it just looks perfect. It looks so dumb with those dinky little tires and yeah. with these, like, I want it to be almost this tall. I wanna drop the body probably, I'm gonna say maybe like, as far as what the front is here, maybe mm -hmm. four, four or five inches lower than what it is now. And then probably like three Jeez. inches lower at the back. Obviously, we're gonna have a lot of fender cutting to do, but that's, you know, that was always gonna be the case. But like, I love it being monster truck tall because it's just the body. Yeah. The, all the weight is still down low, except for the cage. But this way, like, <laughs> a full grown adult can sit in it and drive it. A full grown adult being, you know, someone taller than me, apparently. Um, <laughs> apparently at 30, I'm still not a full grown adult. Obviously, I'm still building Barbie cars in my shed. Yeah, no, it's it's just perfect. Like, the wheelbase is perfect. It's, it's just long enough that the tires, like, are exactly as long as the body. Yeah. And with a little creative plastic body work, we can make it look like it's supposed to be that way. It just looks... It's insane. It's so good. <laughs> also, look at this. 
I just unscrewed the whole middle section. This is the most I've been able to do with the least amount of cutting. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure that's straight up just a Barbie Jeep and they built a different body for the top of it. Uh, yeah, except it'll be a roll cage. There. Probably. Well, you actually look small in this thing. Yeah, with it the way it is right now, like, this is, this is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, like, even if I lower it a few inches, it should still be tall enough for, like, you to be in here with your helmet on. Yeah. This is gonna be <laughs> the most bizarre experience. Yeah. <laughs> Driving this thing, which is a monster truck that is a hot pink Barbie camper. <laughs> I think this is gonna be about the height, which is awesome because even the entire dash fits right That's back in there. Too good. And we can have this little port access for something like radiator fill or like winch access. Probably radiator, actually. We're gonna be able to fit a full-size radiator in this bad boy. Yeah, we'll probably just put the original right back in it with the fan and everything, like, easily. So cool. And then we'll cut this whole thing out, cut out all of these louvers, and then make a metal grill that kind of matches what was here so we get some actual airflow. We've been sitting on something since one of our very first projects. This came with the BMW that turned into the BMW. We've had it for such a long time, and this is finally where it belongs. Oh yeah, I didn't even know what you were talking about. That's hilarious. Forgot about this. Oh! Hot pink quick release five point harness. <laughs> I forgot we even had this. This is so epic. Yeah. I think about it every once in a while. Like, yeah, like we throw it in. Yeah, but I, this is the first thing that's obvious. Yeah. Oh yeah. It is gonna be so legendary being in a Power Wheels with a roll cage and a harness. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be next level. But yeah, look at all this room. It's so much crazy. So much room for activities. I'm sure everyone who plays Fortnite is already thinking this. Do you guys know the last update where you just throw the tire at the cars and then they turn into monster trucks? Is that like to scale? of what happens in Fortnite. I cannot wait to make videos because we have a whole nother body like Ethan said. So we can do that. <laughs> hey Frederick. <laughs> we can do that with our videos and use the sound effects and everything. I'm, I'm looking forward to that.